Okay, we're recognizing and using equations as spheres, and of course this is a vectors approach. This is meant to be uh, part of a study of vectors. So, before we go on to spheres, let's go back to what we know about circles. Now, a circle basically <coughs> is a relation where you've got a center, and everything consistent with that relationship is a point essentially equidistant from the center. So it, it's this continuous curved line which we call the circumference of which every point or every member point of that circumference is equidistant from the center and that particular distance is called R the radius. Okay so it's a relation or a locus some people might say such that every point is equidistant from the center. So that's you sort of yeah you, know, you might not have defined it that way in the past but you knew that. And you, knew, you know that um, a basic circle has an equation of this type, of this style. Now there, are, you can translate the circle and so on, and there's, a, there's other forms of this equation, but it's a general Cartesian form of an equation of a circle <coughs> uh, with a center of zero, zero. And so a unit circle um, could have this equation here where the radius is 1. In three-dimensional space there is such a thing called a unit sphere. And okay, so it has three dimensions and we have this equidistant quality about it, about the center. So on any sphere all the points on the surface of that sphere are equidistant from the center and that that distance again is called the radius. So um, we could have a, a unit sphere with a radius of equal uh, radius equal to 1 and all of those points on the surface so notice I'm not saying circumference this time I'm saying surface because we have a surface being a three-dimensional solid and any any point on that surface is a uh, one radius away from the center and in a unit sphere it's the radius equal to 1. So what we can see then is that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Now um, having dealt with three-dimensional vectors and magnitude before that should not be a big surprise. So any point let's say P, any point P of x, y, and z satisfies this equation on a unit sphere. Okay, so we say vector OP modulus or the, the magnitude of vector OP equals 1. That P, P can be any point there. Okay, so it's a P is on the surface. It's on the it's on the surface of the sphere, the unit sphere in this case. Hopefully, you've seen in the past if we have a circle going back to two dimensions and the center is not at the origin, we can represent it with the equation with parameters h and k, where h k is the center. So the radius is R and HK is the center. Putting all these things together, we have the Cartesian equation of a sphere. So putting what we had um, so far in the video there, for with a center C of points HK and L um, using a radius of A, we have something that does resemble the form of the circle taken out the three dimensions. So x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared plus z minus l all squared equals a squared the radius. Some, some texts may still use r squared there. Um, but we're going to use r in a different way so that's why in this particular case they've used the symbol a for the radius. 
Now, using that uh, idea of equidistant uh, points from the center, we could say using a vector approach, the sphere of center C in radius A has the uh, vector equation of magnitude of R minus vector OC equals A. So in other words, a point P lies on the sphere if it satisfies, um, if and only if, uh, its position satisfies the condition. So it, the point P's position vector, all right, R satisfies the condition. So R is the position vector of the point P. So in other words, OP is what they mean by R. So two examples to finish off now. Um, in this example, we've got a sphere. Considering a sphere, it's got a radius of 6 and a center at 1, negative 2, 3. Find the Cartesian equation firstly, and then find the vector equation. For the Cartesian equation, we need to identify H, K, and L. And that's pretty easy to do. So we've got H equals 1. K equals negative 2 and L equals 3. That's cursive L. And so with a radius of 6, we've got X minus H all squared plus Y minus K all squared plus Z minus L all squared equals A squared with A being the radius. Well, radius is 6, so a squared is 36, and we have x minus 1, all squared. Now, y minus negative 2 is y plus 2, so it's y plus 2, all squared, plus z minus 3, all squared. So that's our Cartesian equation. The vector equation is such for, for a certain vector r, we have to come up with the position vector. So the position vector based on that center would be R minus, use brackets, 1i minus 2j plus 3k magnitude equals A, which is the radius, which equals 6. So the vector equation is the magnitude of R minus I minus 2J plus 3K equals 6. Final example now. So final example, find the intersection of a line given by the vector R, as you see there. It's got a T parameter, which might be time. Um, T is a real number. So between the line or the vector R, and the sphere, so point of intersection we're trying to find here. Okay, so expanding out the vector, T expands out to all the terms inside there, so it would actually be R equals 2Ti plus Tj minus 2Tk. We can, uh, and in general with our form, to generate the parametric equations, which was in a previous video, so to generate the parametric equations, because in general we have um, xi plus yj plus zk for a three-dimensional situation. We thus have x would then be uh, equivalent to 2t. y would be equivalent to 1t or just t, z would be equivalent to negative 2t. Now for it to intersect, those points to intersect with the sphere, we need to be able to sub them into the equation for the sphere.
Oh, I spelled substitution wrong. Okay, so subbing that in there, we've got uh, instead of x squared, we've got 2t all squared. Y is t. Z is negative 2t. So it's squared equals 9. So we have 4t squared plus t squared plus 4t squared equals 9. So we have 9t squared equals 9. t squared equals 1, t equals plus or minus 1. So we can go back to our line if we like, because that um, the line, the point that um, once we substitute those values into the equation for the line, we'll get that point. Okay, so for the first point, um, subbing in, and you can see there that I've used the positive first there for t, and that um, means we have a position vector 2i plus j minus 2k, which gives a point 2. Uh, if that's the position vector, the point that where it touches the sphere will be at the end of that position vector because it's got to satisfy the equation 2, 1, negative 2. Now for the final part where we use the negative value um, times by the vector r, this is applying the definition of the vector equation to a sphere. Okay, so we have a negative 2 minus 1 and positive 2 on the end. So we have the point negative 2, negative 1 and 2.